I was putting up some new wall art in my place just to try and make it a little cuter for the winter because it's very gray here. And I remembered that I had these two pieces. They are very cute. They're like um, plaster, I think. And they're pretty beat up. But these came from my grandma. Um, they were in her house somewhere in Newfoundland. Somehow they ended up in my possession. So I'm gonna try and restore them a little bit. Not like in a big way. Um, they've been glued together and I'm afraid to mess with the glue at all because um, they've <laughs> broken or clearly fallen off the walls several times. There's a big crack across this one. And uh, this one has some really orange glue. I'm sure just oxidized over time. Or maybe it was some kind of orange glue. So today I'm just going to uh, try and color match the porcelain or the plaster and um, cover over the glue and fix some of the details that have just kind of worn away with time. And yeah, then I wanna hang these up in my place so I can think about her and see them. The first task in restoring this piece is to match the plaster and I'm very proud to say, as you'll see here, that I got it right on the first time. It was maybe a, a shade lighter than the actual color, but there was so much, um, I don't know, dust and time that had baked into this piece from it hanging on walls for so long that even after I cleaned it, and, and I cleaned it before I filmed this video, um, the, the colors were just different on all sides, especially on the top where dust would have gathered the most. So I decided that painting over the whole piece with this neutral color would be the best choice in restoring it. And I say restoring it because that's, I mean, technically what I'm doing, but I'm not trying to do like conservation work. I'm just trying to make a piece that is sentimental to me, um, look a little bit better. And I, definitely feel like it kept in the spirit of what my grandma had done to clearly repair it. She was the kind of person who would just make do with the best that she had and it would be fine and she wouldn't worry about things being perfect. At least that's the impression I had of her. And uh, I think that comes across in the not super elegant glue job <laughs> to repair this piece where it had fallen over time, clearly um, repaired because she loved it. And I asked my mom about these pieces because I knew that they had come from uh, Japan. And I wanted to just get the story right on how they came to be in my grandma's possession. And it was that um, she had a sister who married an American and he was posted in Japan um, in the 60s, I believe. I'm not totally sure, this is just, so it, it was my grandma's sister mailed them to her and other little um, souvenirs from Japan when, when they were stationed over there. I did look up the labels on the back and also tried to do like a Google photo search of these pieces. I couldn't find any other of the same ones. Maybe they are extant, I just don't know. But uh, the brand was uh, a, a company, I guess, that made a lot of little porcelain figurines, mostly little statues. Um, I didn't see any other wall hangings like this, but they were interesting and, and uh, quite fun to look at. 
I really struggled over what was the right thing to do with the gold on this piece um, because on the one hand I, I like seeing the, the hand of the maker, the person who painted this, and to think about them working on it with a little brush just like me, but you know, 60 years ago. <laughs> I don't remember how, many, how long ago it was made. Um, but it was just discolored enough that I decided I would repaint the gold. Um, I left the black background as is, and I didn't actually paint the faces either, except to touch up one small spot. And I'm happy with just this decision because in the end, I feel like I had a very interesting experience painting this. You can see this is the finished result of the first one with just the plaster color, which I think turned out very nice. I hope you will agree with me. And I like that you can still see the repair that my grandma did from the inside. Uh, and here's the comparison between the one that I hadn't done yet and the one that I did touch up. Um, yeah, this is just, like I said, this is just a personal project. This is for my benefit, so that's why I'm okay with painting over the original paint. But I do think of this whole process as an interesting experience because not only am I sitting in the shoes of the person who made it originally and, you know, as I'm painting over their <laughs> gold leafing or gold paint, I'm thinking about their process and the time they spent probably mass producing these and then I'm thinking about you know my grandmother's sister who found it and thought of her and sent it around the world to Newfoundland to her and then I think about my grandma who received it and then loved it and even though clearly it fell off the wall <laughs> so many times uh, she put it back together and now it's here in my house. I didn't get to know my grandma as an adult because she passed away in 2017, but before that she had uh, dementia, so she didn't really know who I was. But that, um, when I was growing up, she used to be the highlight of my summer. She used to save, like, it wasn't just for me, she also treated my mom this way when she was a kid, but grandma used to save all these little bits of yarn scraps and jars of buttons and other little craft supplies under a cupboard under the stairs. And I just remember having so much fun playing with those. So I don't know, she was, she, in my memory, she's somebody who would just indulge my creativity and was happy to just leave me be with um, some craft supplies. And I was just happy there when she was there. But she was a very cool person. Uh, she did a lot of volunteering in her community. She worked really hard. She raised a lot of kids and she loved fashion and she was a big flirt. So we don't have all that in common necessarily, but yeah, I don't know. I just love thinking about her. And I have a picture of her and my mom and me on the fridge. And uh, it's kind of the only picture I have other than me as a child with her. Um, so I love seeing it. And now I get to see these pieces too. And uh, it just makes me feel good, you know. The gold paint that I'm using here uh, and I will say I didn't test this for lead. It's very possible that this um, shiny paint is lead, but I'm I painted over it, and there's no one's gonna be touching it, so it's fine. Um, I'm just using some basic gold paint here. The brand is Monmart, um, and I think I got it at uh, Winners, so it's just their art brand. But I think it turned out pretty well. It was very tonally similar, but it had a lot more luminance and that may just be because of the age of the other paint um, versus the, act. maybe it looked more originally like this, um, but I think it's a subtle enough effect while still making it a little more shiny. I'm very happy overall is what I'm trying to say with how this touch up went. And I think, uh, I hope you agree that the color matches that I did were very on point. Um, considering I was just sort of using what I had. Now painting the four corners was a bit more challenging because the original design, oh here you can see the, the before and after of the gold. I think it is really pretty in the after. Um, this the, the corners were painted in a way that was very done very quickly, like it was sort of brushed lightly with a little bit of paint, um, so it was imprecise. And when I had painted over them, I knew that I was going to kind of have a challenge deciding how to redo that section, but I ended up just taking my time and going very slowly over the high points. And I think, uh, I think you'll agree that the end result is very pretty.
painting these straight lines, my hands were shaking just because um, I had been doing this for so long, but also the focus it took to paint the straight line in that little trough was a lot. And when I realized that the original painting had very similar shakes in the same lines, um, I felt very connected to the original artist who did this piece because we both struggled through the same section. And that was the kind of artist solidarity I needed to get me through the rest of this piece. It's not perfect, my lines aren't perfect, but uh, that's fine. So here's the finished product. This is what they look like now, and I'm very happy. I think if my grandma were to see them, she would also be quite impressed by my handiwork. Um, hopefully she wouldn't mind, although I don't think she would. To tell you the truth, when I was starting this project, I was very tempted to repaint them in bright colors because that's more my aesthetic, but I'm very happy that I kept it more true to the originals because, I don't know, it's just, it felt like the right thing to do. Now the only thing left to do is hang them up in my home and I decided to put them here in the entrance way because it was a space that I see every day. I'll see it when I come in and out and it's beside the fridge which as I mentioned is where the photo of her and me is so that just seemed like a good spot. But I will completely admit that I do have concerns about them falling and breaking since that seems to be a bit of a curse with these pieces. But I checked and the strings are very well attached, they're like wires actually, and this little nook means that they won't get bumped by coats or shoulders or bags. Um, they should hopefully be safe. So hopefully my restoration is the only time that has to be done. And I don't mind that there's still cracks and I can still see my grandma's handiwork on that. I've never really done a project like this, restoring an old piece of art, so I hope you enjoyed watching me do it. Um, I got a lot of enjoyment out of making it, and even making this video, looking back at the footage, I don't know, it just makes me smile. And it's nice to preserve old things, even if they aren't perfect. I don't know, it's perfect to me. Thanks for watching. <laughs>